Turner and said, I'm hearing rumors that, you know, there's a rift between us. Or I'm hearing rumors that Mike might be on the hot seat. Whatever you do, do not fire Mike McCagnin. We're getting along great. I promise you he would not have been fired. So was this Adam Gase... Yeah, you know, at too brute? No, I don't think. I don't, you know, I don't think that I he. March? Yeah, I don't think he was the one who stabbed the back. But I do think Gase probably was quiet when these rumors were going around and didn't necessarily run into the owner's office and say, "Whatever you do, keep him on board. We need Mike." Got a lot of his place, Rick. Right. He's not here to save people's jobs. I understand, but I mean, to say there's, the, you know, obviously this was not his choice. He didn't choose Mike McCagnin. It wasn't like they were hired together. <laughs> Mike McCagnin was there before him and ended up being a lame duck general manager and was through the draft and all this stuff. But they had five months to kind of get to know each other. And after those five months, Gase did not lay on the sword and say, no matter what, do not let, make sure this guy isn't on someone else's staff. I think if he wanted to, he could have. He didn't, which doesn't mean anything is wrong with that. But let's not say that Gase, you know, didn't go out of his way. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Kyle, there's, there's a perception that Adam Gase, I feel like from Jets fans at least, that he like little fingered this thing. Mm -hmm. That it was like calculated. Sure. Moves were made since getting hired. That's the struggle of the power struggle that he's talking about. What right. do you think? I think Gase is a beauty. I really do. I look at these quotes and like, these are May quotes. Like, this is when it's pretty chill. Like, when it's week seven, week eight, when the heat comes, like, what are we going to get from him? And I think I'm kind of on the page that Peter is, which is like, Gase is saying, I didn't burn down the bar, Your Honor. I just stood there while they light the match. I didn't actually light it. Like, he's like, I didn't tell uh, my owner to fire McCagnin, but I didn't tell him not to. And I just, like, the Jets are invested in Adam Gase. Like, they're, they're going to ride or die with Adam Gase. So the idea that they would not have talked to him or made sure he was all right with the GM getting canned in May is absurd. I'm sure that they were very involved in it. He did not fire him, technically. We're, we're getting into a little bit of, like, of splitting hairs here, where Gase did not fire him, but he didn't stop him from being can I, fired. Can I give a similar situation? And again, there was never a thought of being fired, but when Sean McVay was hired in L.A., Les Snead was already the GM. Okay. They didn't know each other, McVay and Snead. And, you know, they hire him and Kevin Demoff and the Cronkies say, all right, this is Les, he's the GM. We're hoping you guys get along swimmingly and we go from there. It happens that they did and they had success right away and it all worked out great. This is the alternative of that where, okay, there's a GM already sitting there. We're going to hope that you guys all get along yeah. and then we're going to assess yeah. it. And, you know, whereas McVeigh and, and Sneed became good friends and let's roll, it didn't happen with Gase and McCagnin. Yeah. And they had five months and they had a feeling out process with free agency in the draft. And now Gase is going to get somebody that he is comfortable with and there is chemistry and he more importantly respects. That's where I think this is headed. It's more, let's rip the Band-Aid off in May as opposed to dealing with this all year long and this awkward marriage of, of two guys who did not know each other prior to working together. So... I'm not hearing too many names as candidates lately. We heard a couple. This is a week later. You think in making a move like that, they might even have a guy lined up ready to take the job. So I don't know whether or not I should be worried, Traeger, at this point. And if you're a GM or somebody, these mm -hmm. names that we're hearing in the Philly front office, so it's a cush jig. You work with Howie Roseman. You won a Super Bowl recently. How, how coveted is this job right now, and how much hesitation should a potential candidate have? I think the hesitation would come from, all right, if Gates didn't get along with that guy, and that guy's pretty likable around the league and pretty, you know, whatever, why would I want to risk my family, move it to take a job? But the other job, the other part of it is there's 32 jobs as GM. If you get right. offered a GM job, that's your life building towards that. But, Kay, I would not panic about the fact that it's Tuesday morning and there hasn't been any interviews okay. set or anything like that. In fact, I would look back in recent years. Some of the most successful GMs in this league right now, Brandon Bean in Buffalo, uh, John Dorsey with Cleveland was hired in December. But uh, the way that these guys are hired, Brett Veach in Kansas City, if you look at these three GMs here and when they were hired, mm -hmm. you see that these three GMs, Marty Herney, okay. Brandon Bean, right, look at the date that they were hired as GMs. That's deep in July. So Bean takes over for Doug Whaley after the draft. Marty Herney takes over for Gettleman in July. Brett Veach in July, right? I mean, right before 2017, July, right before training camp. No one ever wonders, did right. they miss out because right. of that? Look at the head coaches, right. though. You're talking Ron Rivera. You're talking Andy Reid. This right. didn't start five months ago with Adam Gase, guys, right? This started with a failed season last year, and it wasn't just the record. I mean, I think we can all agree, going into the season, how high are the expectations for the Dolphins? Not great. And he had a hand mm. in that. Not great record. Not great decision-making. And players, outwardly speaking, 
in a negative light about the environment that was down there with the Dolphins. I think that's why fans have a right to be like, was this the right move because it's Adam Gase? I, I don't know if it would be the same if it was a different coach like the ones that It's we not Andy Reid, yeah. someone it's who's been fair. around the game forever. I, I look very simple. If I'm up for a GM job, I'm going to look at some basic things. Okay. Do we have a quarterback? Yes. Now, we're going to have to pay him, but I'd rather worry about that. Do we have talent? Yes. The contract's a little much, but I'd rather worry about that. Do we have an owner who is involved, but not too involved? Yes. As we know for a fact, Christopher Johnson is not interested in being famous. I do think, though, that when you get to the yeah, but is how am I going to work with Adam Gase? Is yeah. he going to be here in a year? Is he going to be here in two years? I recently, over the weekend, had some FaceTime with Chicago Bears. And one of the other examples we brought up, Peter, uh, Pace and Nagy, Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, there's something to them that is palpable. Um, they have a chemistry. They have a friendship. They live in the same community. They show up to events together. Their wives are clearly friendly. And I think that that translates not just to the roster, to the locker room, to the office. So my only reservation would be, am I walking into a buzzsaw with Adam Gase? And if I don't know him prior, I'm a, li a lame duck or just a, a Tasmanian devil. You know what I mean? Like, I got to work with him every day. That's my only reservation. Other than that, I think it's a really good gig. Well, you mentioned it. You mentioned the passionate head coach you have that, regardless of how you may uh, view Adam Gase. He loves the game. Quarterback. You got a young quarterback, running back. You went down the list. Talented players and all that. I think another thing that makes this job very special, forget about it being New York for a second. Can you win in your division sometime soon? Okay. Is that because of the GOATs retiring? Is that because of other teams not taking that step up? Don't you want to get in early? It's like getting on a, early on an investment. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden looking down the line saying, you know what, I'm glad I was here in the beginning. Because if you sign with the Jets and this yeah. team pans out to be something special and Tom Brady ends up retiring over the next few years, isn't this a good job to have? Oh, not to mention, it's New York City. So, yes, this is one of the most coveted jobs in all of football. There, there's only 32, but there could be an opening at the end of the season they have to look forward to. Really quickly before we hit break, what are the players thinking right now? Because it is important what the future holds with these two and the synergy they have. Are Le'Veon Bell's deal's done. Darnold, mm -hmm. Francesco, mm -hmm. are they thinking about this at all? Earmuffs and blinders on. They're focused on the playbook, getting ready, getting better. That's it. Final word, Shrakes? Final word is I was just going to introduce the crowd a little bit to the name yes. that is the leading member. It is Joe Douglas. That is the name you keep on hearing even now as we head into Tuesday. And if you don't know Joe Douglas's story, he's got a long history in scouting, one of the most respected guys in the league. His resume is as follows here. And right now he's with the, the Philadelphia Eagles. That's the present gig, and he won the Super Bowl with the Eagles. But longtime Ravens. Long time, uh, in between all that, he was with the Bears sure. with Adam Gase. Gase, yeah. Chicago. And that, that was the key there, and that should be on the resume as that well. Connection. So the connection with Gase is why everyone is linking them together. And, and his name keeps coming up, but the fact is, does he want that game? Mm -hmm. And if, like you said, Kate, there will be other GM jobs that come along. And if you're the Prince Charming or the darling of everyone's eye, like, do you take the first one you're offered? Do you even go and entertain that? Is he viewed that way or is it just because of that connection to Gase that everybody's connected to He is that? viewed that way. He's he is. very He's well the around the league. The, the Eagles have cleaned up in the draft. Is it officially Big Joe Douglas? Is that the name we go or is it just Joe? Big Joe. No? I've heard you call him Big Joe, no? Yeah. He's a big dude. He's a big guy. Yeah. Big, bald, I just want to know. looking guy. Yeah, I like looking him. Looking guy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Speaking of, what did you call him? A what, big what? Hulking. Hulking. A Hulking. big hulking guy will join our show in just a little Who? bit. Who? Uh, a tight end named O.J. Howard. Hey. hey! You're high on the Buccaneers. Absolutely. I carry the stick, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> Earth, Kelsey. How about Howard, though? Is this the year that OJ breaks into the upper echelon of tight ends? And Ben Roethlisberger opening up saying he's sorry. Is that enough to mend fences in Steeler Nation? I love this stuff. I love the Steelers. <laughs> Keeping us in it, guys. Make <laughs> house photos. That's the soap opera actor. Yep.